Hi there, I'm Danny Flexen and welcome to Seconds Out Reflections. We're out every Monday at 4.30pm reflecting back, see where you get the name, reflecting back on the weekend's action. Um, big fight this weekend, let's get straight into it. Manny Pacquiao, 40 years old, looking to entice Floyd Mayweather into a big money rematch, pun intended, um, by fighting someone who used to be Mayweather's protege, Adrian Broner, kind of a Mayweather light, if you like. Um, few people were predicting in advance of the fight that due to Pacquiao's advancing age and the fact that he's certainly past his prime, I don't think you can argue that he's not, Broner had a real shot in this fight and, and that he seemed motivated and serious for a change, apparently, although I didn't really catch that. Well, as it turned out, the vast majority predicted a Pacquiao points win because he's the better, more motivated fighter and because Broner's got a good chin and wouldn't be stopped. They were all right, so well done. All of you predicted it. Still was an entertaining fight. Broner complained afterwards that he thought he deserved the decision. I think he might have been high or joking or both, knowing him. Um, but either way, he did not win more than two rounds. It's very hard, even as an ardent Broner fan, which I'm not, but if I was, to give him more than two rounds. Pacquiao pressed the action. His hand speed was impressive. His footwork was impressive, especially given the fact that he is 40 now. Coming off that blowout win over Lucas Matisse, outboxed Broner for around 10 of the 12 rounds. I think he was only outlanded in two rounds as well. So the punch stats, they're not always indicative, but they back up most people's opinions, certainly the judges' verdict. Broner, typical Broner really, just didn't do enough. You know, he, he was able to land counters, especially in the early rounds. He was able to time Pacquiao sometimes and land his right hand over the top impressively. But outboxing someone for five to ten seconds of each round isn't enough to win a fight. You know, you have to do more than that. You have to produce more work rate and you have to have eye-catching punches to catch the judge's attention on a regular basis. And he just didn't do enough. And especially once Pacquiao stepped up the pressure, you know, started advancing behind his good footwork, using his jab more, Brona just seemed to sit on the ropes a bit too more, waiting for that perfect shot all the time. And unfortunately for him, it never came. Interesting to see what happens next. You know, Brona would always get big fights. He's a dial mover when it comes to TV ratings. Um, he's still an entertaining fighter to watch, and at a certain level, he can still win. You know, he drew with Jesse Vargas not too long ago, so he's still a good fighter at a, a decent level, just not the very elite. That's when he falls short to the likes of Pacquiao, Mikey Garcia, Sean Porter, Marcus Maidana, etc. Actually, there is no etc. I think that's his four defeats. But regardless, what's the real interest now is, will Pacquiao Mayweather 2 happen? Some people were predicting it would be announced in the ring after the Broner fight. Certainly wasn't, and in fact, Mayweather came out and said he's not really interested in a rematch. Big money on offer could change that. We know Mayweather loves um, the cash, the moolah. Um, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. I think Pacquiao, it's going to be a struggle for him to get the really big fights that are going to keep his desire going. If he doesn't get the Mayweather rematch, which he's been chasing for a while. He does loads of charity work back home in the Philippines. He's obviously a state senator over there as well. He's going to need kind of a mouth-watering fight, but one that he can also have a realistic chance of winning. You know, he's currently competing at world's weight. I wouldn't like to see him go any further up in weight than that. There's guys like Errol Spence, Terence Crawford. Do long-time fans of Pacquiao really want to see him take a big risk like that against the young guns of the division? I think we'd rather see Spence and Crawford fight each other. Um, but if Pacquiao is insistent on sticking around and Mayweather's not available, maybe they're the areas he needs to look at. Keith Thurman, maybe, who's just come back. If he beats Jose Cito Lopez in his comeback fight this month, perhaps that could be one for Pacquiao. We'll wait and see. Good undercard as well on the show at the, uh, Las Ve in Las Vegas. Um, we saw uh, Nordine Abali, sorry, I had to think about that, win the vacant WBC bantamweight title against Roshi Warren on points. Did well to do that, relatively close, but deserved winner. Interestingly, both men medalled at the 2007 World Amateur Championships in Chicago. Ubali only turned pro in 2014, I think, so he's kind of taken a long route from amateur pro and he's finally got his reward. I'm sure Warren can come back, he's been a world champion before as well. Um, but a little trivia question for you, add to the comments below. Please don't Google it because it will spoil it for everyone else. We want to see who's got the real boxing knowledge out there. Four current professional world champions medalled at the 2007 uh, World Amateur Championships in Chicago. As I've just revealed, one of them is Nordina Bali. Who are the other three? Please name them below. There's no prize, just my respect for what it's worth and your own personal pride. But it's something, it's better than nothing on a, on a cold Monday. So yeah, let, let us know who you think the other three are below. Um, also on the undercard, we saw uh, Marcus Brown come of age, if you like, at light heavyweight against Badu Jack. Kind of relatively comfortably outboxing Jack until Jack suffered a huge 
cut. I don't want to say axe wound because the other connotations of that phrase in the UK might get me into trouble, but I've just said it now. Huge wound in his forehead, looked like he'd been sliced with an axe. Google it, Google image, that's something you can Google. Image search it, um, Badu Jack cut, don't put Badu Jack gash, please. Badu Jack cut, see what you think. Huge, horrible wound, surprised it wasn't stopped. Marcus Brown was already winning the fight. Badu Jack, who's a true gentleman, tweeted after the fight, best man won on the night, refused to blame the cut. Classy man, he'll come again. As for Marcus Brown, he represents a difficult stylistic matchup for most of the other champions, if not all the other champions, at £175. Looking at some other action, Friday we saw two shows in New York, one upstate, one uh, New York City on Madison Square Garden. The Zone show, in last week's Flexpectations, I've got to hold my hands up, there they are, and say, look, I criticised it, I said there were too many opponents announced at short notice, which was kind of vindicated when Jarrell Miller was later pulled off the bill because they couldn't find someone for him and also because he might be fighting Anthony Joshua in June, world's worst kept secret. Um, but I also said there were too many mismatches on the bill, one of which that I highlighted was Jorge Linares against Pablo Cesar Cano. Well, I end up with egg on my face and I say sorry to Matchroom for that one. I'm, I'm not saying sorry for the whole card because it wasn't amazing, but fair play, Pablo Cesar Cano. Lost two of his last three, seemed over the hill, always lost when he stepped up to elite level, not having any of it. Ripped up the script, came out hungry and determined, never let Linares in only his second fight at super lightweight, three weight world champion, been hurt early and stopped early before. Never let Linares get a moment's peace, was on him from the opening bell, smashed him to bits, won by stoppage. Who knows what's next for Linares? Maybe drop back down to lightweight because super lightweight for him at the moment looks in tatters. As for Kano, as well as proving me wrong, which I'm sure if he'd even heard of me would make him very happy, let's hope he gets a big fight out of this. He certainly deserves one. Um, also on that bill, what did we see? What did we see? Um, yeah, Jarrell Miller was pulled off. Um, Dimitri, <laughs> I'm just I'm saying the wrong thing every moment here. Jarrell Miller was withdrawn from the bill, I should probably say. Um, but also, Artur Akovov in his second world title shot. First one was against Billy Joe Saunders. Gave WBO middleweight champion Demetrius Andrade significantly less problems than he gave an under par Saunders, we should say. Um, Andrade was winning at a canter, pretty much, and then we saw with about 24 seconds to go in the fight, one of the strangest stoppages you'll ever see. I encourage you to seek it out. Um, he took a couple of clean shots, Akovov, and then he covered up, took a couple of shots on the gloves, and for some reason, with such a short time left in the fight, Akovov, in no trouble whatsoever, was rescued, in inverted commas. No idea why. Bizarre stoppage. Maybe, I don't know, maybe Andre had said, I haven't had a stoppage for a while or something, but very, very strange one. Referee needs looking at, I think, regardless of it still being the right winner. Um, same night, upstate New York, Verona. Um, two gentlemen of Verona, if you like. I'm surprised they didn't use that tagline. Heavyweights, Oscar Rivas, unbeaten NABF champion. Fought Bryant Jennings, who was steadily working his way towards a world title shot. Well, he'd have to steadily go back to the drawing board because Rivas beat him. Um... It was quite a dreary fight, truth be told. Um, Jennings spent too much time on the ropes, too much time flicking his jab out. Reva spent far too much time getting beaten to the punch, stalking Jennings but failing to cut the ring off. Until towards the end of the fight, his corner implored him, look, you're not doing enough, we need some more urgency from you. And to be fair to him, he responded. He flew out of the blocks, threw punches in bunches, which he should have done from the start of the fight, and got him out of there. So we've got a hope for Reves' sake and for another exciting addition to heavyweight that the last round said more about him than the, pre than the rounds that preceded it because until that point he'd looked a bit of a plodder, if we're honest. So not an exciting main event, but the thrills were provided by Shakur Stevenson who took his latest step on the undercard. He looked great and then after the fight, which is more notable than the win itself, he challenged Josh Warrington, IBF featherweight champion. He, Shakur, wants to come over to England and fight him, which... We'd love to see you, Shakur. It's freezing over here at the moment, but don't let that put you off. Come over. Not everywhere in England looks like my front room, which is great. Come over, fight Josh Warrington, but don't underestimate him. We don't know if Lee Selby and Carl Frampton did, but the bookie certainly did, making those two guys the favourites over Warrington when he fought them. He upset the apple cart both times. He's looking better and better with every fight. It's not a gimme for you, Stevenson. And what I should also say is Warrington's quite keen on fighting in the US after if he gets past Kid Galahad in his mandatory defence, big Yorkshire derby, He's quite keen on going over to Vegas and having a big fight there. So you don't have to come to England necessarily, Shakur. I don't know why I keep calling you by your first name. We've never met, but I'm sure you don't mind. You're a nice guy. Maybe that fight could be in Vegas. We'd love to see it. Um, the only other thing to reflect on, apart from the weekend's action, 
is Canelo, as has become his one, announced his latest fight out of the blue. He's done the same with Rocky Fielding, but this one's even more exciting. He's doing a, a middleweight unification fight with Danny Jacobs. Jacobs obviously pushed Gennady Golovkin all the way and since then has won his own world title against Sergei Derevyanchenko, a vacant title or IBF. So now they're going to come together. Um, it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top there. Canelo's obviously very confident or he wouldn't have made the fight. He's got this massive deal with the zone. So he can kind of, from what people are saying, pick and choose his opponents. But he's chosen one of the best available opponents at £160, so we can't help but be impressed. It's in May, of course, Cinco de Mayo weekend, as he said when announcing the fight. He owns those two weekends now, the Mexican holiday weekends in May and September. So we won't look ahead to September, but got to reflect on the fact that Canelo's picked another great fight and we can't wait to watch it. Give us your comments below, not just in answer to the trivia question, which I'll recap in a minute. Who were the best performers over the weekend? Pacquiao's obviously a front runner, but who, who impressed you? Maybe Shakur Stevenson. Um, what do you think of Canelo fighting Jacobs? Is it as good as everyone's saying, or have you got some reservations? And last of all, make sure you answer your trivia question without doing any research, just off the top of your head, and I'll let you know the answer um, probably tomorrow. Um, I'll put it on the comments below. But the question was, there are four professional, current professional world champions who all medalled at the 2007 World Amateur Boxing Championships in Chicago. One of them is Nordina Bali, who we mentioned earlier. Who are the other three? Let us know below. We'll be back with the next Reflections next Monday, 4.30pm, and we'll be at Flex Expectations, which we're going to film on the road, you'll be glad to know, 4.30pm on Thursday. Thank you.